Hello, my name is Robin Strum Mackey, and I am the director of Delaware Paranormal Research Group. I'm also the author of Anatomy of a Ghost, a guide to analyzing the dead, and On the Hunt for the Haunted, Searching for Proof of the Paranormal. I'm going to talk today about our recent investigation of First State Military Academy, uh, formerly uh, Providence Creek Academy, and before that, St. Joseph's Industrial School. Um, this is a property that has a long, long history, um, <clears throat> and a long, long history of being extremely active paranormally. Um, this is our second chance to get in and investigate um, <clears throat> the, prop the property. Um, that included getting into the now abandoned chapel, uh, Catholic chapel, and also uh, Drexel Hall in particular, which is um, a building that is reported to have a lot of activity. I know a lot of people are fascinated by the old chapel, um, and both times that we went uh, and investigated the chapel, it did not fail to produce um, some astounding uh, evidence. This time, again, there were uh, numerous camera movements. Um, I had a camera on a tripod about five feet above the ground up in the choir loft. Um, and various times during the evening, um, the camera itself would seem to move, sometimes side to side, sometimes up and down. You wouldn't hear footsteps. It would be normally when the building was abandoned, but the camera would, would seem to move, and there would seem to be some sounds around, like scraping or rubbing sounds around the microphone as well. It, sounds and looks distinctly different from when I move the camera via the tripod. Um, it happens so often that I'm not going to uh, actually present that evidence, but you can see that evidence of camera movement in our first video on First State Military Academy. So again, we had much the same going on. We also uh, recounted several instances where we, we seem to be getting a lot of EMF uh, readings, and they would be um, all over the board, so like a point 0.1 to a point 0.3 to a 4.4 .4 at one point. Uh, they'd be constant and then they'd die out completely and you'd have a 0, 0.0. Now, one time when this occurred was when Rennie and Marie were in the building. Um, they were getting a lot of, Rennie was reporting a lot of EMF spikes and then Marie went up to the choir loft briefly. Now, it's the middle of July at this point. It is extremely hot this night. There is no AC in the building whatsoever, so the building itself was stifling hot. So she went up to the choir loft, which was even hotter than the first floor. She's up there for only a few minutes, and then she descends. And as she's descending, we distinctly pick up a voice saying, there she goes. It was during setup. Dave and I were in the chapel um, setting up. I had just set the camera up and started it recording um, when we got a couple of very distinct EVPs. One says, I'm sorry, and then as we're just about to de depart the building, it says, hey, like trying to get our attention. best EVP in the chapel that night, however, was um, when Dave and I were in there um, fairly late in the evening. Dave was doing a reading from the Bible. Um, we were in, you know, in a Catholic church, so we were trying to get something to respond to Bible readings. So he had just finished reading the Bible. He was telling me that 
he often reads the Bible, you know, Bible passages in his own church. And then we get a distinct male voice uh, that doesn't sound a thing like Dave saying, it's credible, as if his reading was credible. Uh, and there's also some mumbling right around that area, like someone else was, was speaking as well. Oh, this, the life where you're scared makes all of life complete. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And his church reported as being one of the hot spots in Drexel Hall. Uh, and we got several odd things in Sea Wing that night. Um, now Marie and Rennie were in the main hall where we had our command center kind of set up. And they were talking when a low, very low male voice seems to talk over them. Now we did have one male investigator on the investigation that night. Dave. But Dave has a distinctly high, almost nasally sounding voice, and this is very bass. It's very low. It's obviously not Dave. got what sounded like a female saying something like I want I want I want I want it I want it I want it in succession uh, in Sea Wing That was me. Also in Sea Wing, the entire group was about to depart Drexel and go to the chapel to do a session in the chapel. Um, and we're getting ready to leave and we're going out the door actually when you get this weird whistling sound like, like we're so glad they're leaving. Now I probably wouldn't have Put this forward except that we seem to get it a second time in the night as well so here's the first time 11, 11. And then we were back in the building and Dave had brought a cat ball, which is an electronic ball. When you move it, it lights up lights um, to kind of entice you know, a cat to play with it. Um, the idea being that if you bring it on an investigation and something moves the cat ball, you'll see the lights light up. So Marie is kind of playing with the, the cat ball, kind of kicking it around a little bit on the floor. Um, and then she says, she finishes doing that and she says, can, now can you do that? And then we get what sounds like mumbling again and then a whist, that same whistle, that kind of sound. Now at one point during the night, Sea Wing again, no one's in Sea Wing, you're not going to hear any of us, the REM pod that we had placed in Sea Wing, we've had REM pods on both investigations and they've never made so much as a peep. Uh, in this particular situation, the REM pod went off and went off uh, without pause until it basically um, blew out its, its uh, batteries. Um, but there's also the sounds of uh, doors opening or closing 
um, along with that. And again, you got to remember that Sea Wing is completely empty at this point. We never hear the REM pod going off. We never hear the doors closing. Um, so it was just a really bizarre event. There is some paranormal activity that's reported, but it's not usually considered to be a hotspot. That evening, we were getting a lot of EMF, a lot of EMF, um, all along the main hallway towards A-Wing, in A-Wing itself, um, in the main um, entryway area um, that we couldn't always account for. Um, down the main hallway towards A-Wing, we, we had suggested that it was the AC, C units, they had AC units um, in the wall, um, so we thought maybe that some of the EMF was attributed to, to that, those AC units, but there weren't AC units in the, in the main entryway area, um, and the lights weren't on, so there shouldn't have been EMF. Um, at one point, I had my EMF meter on a table in the front entryway, and we were getting these spikes of EMF coming up and going down and then going back to zero. At one point, my EMF detector shot up to 19, and then it just went to a blank screen, uh, and I could not get it to work again. I had to turn it off, take it outside um, where I had some natural light, put in new batteries, and then start it up before it would actually work again. So the EMF that evening was really off the charts. Um, also, it was, during, it was early in the evening during setup when the crew was in that main entryway again where we had to kind of set up, um, where we had kind of set up a, a main table, you know, command central type of thing. Um, so the three of them were in there. I was actually in the gymnasium putting batteries in one of the cameras. The three of them, as they're sitting there, distinctly heard coming from the direction of A-Wing what sounded like a male voice laughing at them. Now, all three of them heard it distinctly, but unfortunately, it was during setup, and I hadn't started recording, so we don't actually have it on film. But we did get some very interesting things on A-Wing. A-Wing, as I said, because it's not normally considered to be a hot spot, all I had parked down in A-Wing was an audio recorder. But throughout the night, I got some really interesting things on that audio recorder. Um, late in the evening, it sounds like it sounds like a gym teacher, basically. And it says something like, get the ball or get ball. Even more fast. 
fascinating than that. It's 1.30 in the morning. We're all in another part of the building, so A-Wing is completely empty. It's so quiet in A-Wing that the ticking that you're hearing is the wall clock ticking. And then out of nowhere, we get what sounds like a whistle and a couple of shuffling footsteps and mumbling under someone's breath as if a maintenance worker or a cleaning person was in the building. But we know that we were the only four people in that building that night. Uh, we never saw another other person in that building. Um, and the really interesting thing was that the, the four footsteps and the whistling and the mumbling seemed like they, the person turns into another room, like maybe the cafeteria. But if that were so, at some point they would have to come back out and head out back down the hall. So it's just an hour of quiet audio, those four footsteps, the whistle and the mumbling, and then a bed of dead audio with only the clock ticking in the background. front entryway that I was talking about before are areas where I get a lot of reports, especially from principals or the commandant. Um, they'll often report that they'll be in their office, which is right off that main entryway, um, and the building will be empty and they'll hear footsteps all the time, or what sounds like uh, someone else in the bathroom in an otherwise empty bathroom. Um, the water has been known to come on uh, come on frequently when there's no one else in the bathroom with you. Um, and then, as I said, the gymnasium um, tends to be a place where they have a lot of reported activity. The first time we went to First State and did the first investigation, we uh, captured what sounded like footsteps going around. It was Dave and I in the, in the gymnasium, and it sounded like there were footsteps going all the way around us as we sat um, in the middle of the gymnasium. Uh, this time, it was no different, basically. So Marie and Rennie were um, in the gymnasium doing a session. Dave and I were actually in the chapel, so we weren't even in the building. Um, and so they're sitting there, and they hear footsteps out in that main entryway hallway, so distinct that they thought that we had returned. So they're waiting for us, you know, for us to come into view, um, and we don't. But they can continue to hear the sounds. It sounds distinctly like someone's walking around in the hallway, and then perhaps comes in the, the door to the gym. And uh, at one point, Marie says it sounded like something was in the corner of the gym. So they heard these sounds for a number of minutes, um, and they couldn't help. Father Brown, did you, did you teach them another language? Did you speak German? Hello, hello, who are you? I buy it, I'm thinking it's simple. Oh, yeah. Come yeah. on in. 
you can come closer to us. Come, come on in, we'd like to make your acquaintance. Speak in one of these little recording devices here, one of these little boxes, tell us your name. And then Dave and I were doing a turn in the gym as well, um, and I had asked um, if it was one of the brothers that was making all the sounds, and then I got a distinct mumbling, uh, whispery response to my question. Are you one of the brothers? Where'd you go? Now what I wanted to point out is that the ladies heard the footsteps distinctly out in the hall. The audio recorder itself was in the back of the gymnasium um, on the stage, so uh, it didn't pick up the sounds as distinctly as the ladies heard them. We also got other strange sounds in the gymnasium that night. The gymnasium and that front entryway continued to be um, an area of, of fascination. Um, I think my favorite, though, overall was the phantom maintenance worker. Um, again, 1.30 in the morning um, in a completely empty building except for us. The entire building was locked up, so there's no way that someone could have gotten into the building without us being aware of it. Um, and yet we get the four shuffling noises, the whistle and the mumbling that just seem to disappear into the ether. I think if I were to analyze the activity at First State, I would say it's probably a combination of, of residual and also intelligent. Uh, the building and the land are old. It's been a school for probably a hundred years now or more. Um, and I think a lot of that activity has gotten embedded into the very foundations of the school, fueled also by the underground stream that runs all the way across the property. Um, I think it's, it energizes and um, records a lot of the, the activities that go on there, um, including things as mundane as uh, gym, gym teachers saying ball get or um, the whistling phantom maintenance worker. Um, but then there's also um, definite signs of intelligence hauntings as well, like the ghost or the, the spirit saying it's credible in the, in the chapel after we got done reading the Bible verses. So it uh, remains to be remains one of my absolute favorite investigations of all times and one of my all-time favorite locations. So if you like what we do here, please like and subscribe. Again, my name is Robin and I am the director of Delaware Paranormal Research Group. We'll see you in the future um, and thank you for watching. It's warm here. Oh, <laughs> oh that's a good one. Yeah.